Good day, YouTube. One MJ here, and welcome back. Right, Thursday evening here in Australia, and the market is down a little bit, not too much, only ever so slightly. But some something very interesting happening on the Bitcoin charts. We'll get to soon, but let's start with just the general market update. So again, stagnant market. We were at one point nine four trillion dollars yesterday. So in twenty four hours, we're down like you know half a percent. So it really is a bit of sideways movement overall. But you know, there's always some things that are doing really well and some things that aren't doing so well. All right, the volume. Oof. Have a look at that. The volume in 24 hours is now back over a trillion. This was down around the $600 billion mark not that long ago. So the money is starting to flow. Even though the market hasn't moved too much, money is flowing. Bitcoin price having a bit of a retreat. So now at 45,000. We'll have a look at where it could go to. And ETH prices have come down a little bit. I think this was $2.60 or something like that yesterday. Maybe even $3.00. Now we're back down, back down, excuse me, under two dollars. So not too bad. But as we can see, it's a bit of a mixed market. And again, generally overall, the market is down a little bit. But let's have a look. What's done really well? I mean, we can see one of them right here. XRP is on an absolute tear. It is finally over a dollar. And I did this. I did call this a couple of days with a number number of other coins that have done fairly well. Cardano was one of them. Anyway, let's have a look. What's done the best in the last 24 hours in the top 100? What's been the biggest mover? So there we go, uh, XFIN Network, and that's kind of jumping all over the place at times. It's up and then it's down, but look, a number of things are kind of doing that. 31% though in 24 hours, that's pretty nice. Nano making a move near protocol, protocol. There we can see XRP is up there. Clayton, look, double digits, high single digits. Things are looking pretty good. Chili's, another one that I called a few days ago, doing quite well. But again, it's had some kind of volatile moves in and around there. What about losses then? Considering the market's down overall, what's been the biggest loss in the top 100? Ravencoin, but again, that was pumping pretty hard. Runethor uh, chain, still sort of struggling now. It's coming back down again. You know, Again, maybe the hacks, the two hacks that occurred in a week, it's just not gonna get past. We'll have to wait and see. Theta having a bit of a retracement as well. E-gold, E-cash, but look, nothing sort of too major again you know low single digit losses generally and you know a couple of sort of higher single digit losses but nothing too crazy and again it's a bit of a sideways trending market so let's have a look at the bitcoin chart so what we can see is we broke out now we've had sort of one definite red candle and then the last two days there are a bit of indecision candles at the moment so i'm wondering if this is going to be a bit like this we saw that bitcoin got to that sort of resistance then it had to come back down and you know it didn't quite get down there but sort of uh retest old resistance and turn it into support i get the feeling like this might have to do this now is this down trending uh you know line going to be the support or do we have to come back down to a roundabout? I don't know if we'll actually come down to 42,000, but maybe we have to do something similar to this. Now, again, it is Thursday, so we've got the weekend coming, so we could see a couple of days of where we go down before we see another move like this. We'll just have to wait and see the volume. Again, there was a bit of volume there, so maybe, you know, again, this is getting, you know, 10 o'clock uh, over in uh, States time, 10 o'clock in the morning. This market could turn around quite easily. It still is fairly kind of early for them. So this could easily turn green. But at the moment, it seems to have cooled off ever so slightly. And again, I'd just be looking for buy-in points of maybe down around sort of $43,000. You know, it look, it could get down to sort of 42000 I just don't think it's going to go that low, but definitely somewhere around here, kind of $43,000, $44,000 mark, I think look pretty good uh, for buy-in points at the moment. Not financial advice, though, just my personal opinion. Right, Axie Infinity. All right, maybe people knew of this coming, but it is pumped again. So it skyrocketed 30% following Coinbase Pro listing. Now, again, as I said before, the scary thing is if Axie Infinity really does go kind of viral, uh, you know, like the viral games do. I'm trying to think of one. I haven't played games in so long, but uh, there's been puzzle games. I can't uh, something candy can't remember the name of it i mean that went absolutely viral if axie infinity does something like that then its token price could you know 
continue to skyrocket it may not even be you know halfway there again not financial advice and i'm not jumping into it but that is a scary thought and again you know coinbase pro they once upon a time was such a conservative uh, exchange you know they, they really had to have a, a history behind them before they could get listed on coinbase pro and these days they list just about sort of anything that's popular and doing kind of well gets listed on coinbase pro and they had to do that to keep up with the other exchanges or they would simply get left behind right ripple again they're on a bit of a tear at the moment and maybe this has something to do with it so ripple and gme remittances join forces for immediate payments from South Korea to Thailand. So, you know, Ripple starting to live up to what it was all about, you know, being able to transfer money easily between, you know, different places and different currencies and things like that. So being the kind of intermediary for that, seems like it's starting to, you know, things are falling in place outside of the SEC, you know, lawsuit against them. It's starting to look promising again. I'm not saying, you know, rush out and buy XRP. I did buy XRP the other day and it's uh, done extremely well. On average, the coins I bought the other day are up about 16%. Not all of them. Uh, engine's actually fallen down a little bit, but the other four out of the five are doing quite well. So, yeah, you can't win them all and I still really like engine. So, uh, I'm pretty confident it'll do well in the longer run. Now we talked about the biggest DeFi, well, not just the biggest DeFi hack, the biggest hack in sort of crypto history, 611 million from uh, Poly Network. It seems the hacker has returned about half of it already. So $342 million has been returned to the Poly Network. Still only half, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with the other half. But look, this is really good news for all those who actually sort of lost money. Uh, I mean, I know Box Mining had some, you know, tweets out there saying he really got hit by this uh, Poly Network hack. So hopefully he's gotten, you know, at least some of his money back. Again, hopefully about half of it. And then hopefully the other half is, excuse me, on its way. You know, it, people work really hard for their money. So, you know, no one really wants to lose it. And, you know, hacking's... Yeah, probably not the greatest way to earn money, but you know, that's what some people do for a living and you know, so be it. But yeah, it's good that at least half the money's been returned. You know, that is really good news. All right, digital asset management uh, manager, sorry, Valkyrie has now filed for a Bitcoin futures ETF. So they can't get a normal Bitcoin ETF uh, over the line. So now they're going for Bitcoin futures ETFs. They're, you know, they're all trying everything they can go to do to get you know an ETF uh, sort of across the line, whether it's actually in Bitcoin or just Bitcoin futures, and you know we'll have to wait and see. You would think that one has to be, uh, yeah, one would have to be approved soon. They're being approved all over the world, everywhere but the US. It's just hard to imagine that the US is going to be. Uh, so far behind but again now they're just trying to you know find other ways to get around a regular bitcoin etf and are going for futures etfs uh, and yeah valkyrie so now they've got two uh before uh, the boards uh, a regular bitcoin etf and now also a futures etf All right seems samsung is reportedly going to be part of south korea's central bank digity a uh, digity <laughs> sorry bank digital currency pilot so cbdc is going to be rolled out over in south korea and samsung's going to be part of it you're going to be able to use it on their uh mobile phone by the sounds of it and then like we we're just talking about before ripple south korea and thailand so maybe ripple will be you know somewhere in amongst all of that with samsung i'm sure they'll be interoperable samsung's not just gonna you know be sort of pegged to one sort of currency or, or, or one kind of crypto all the phones will eventually go that way in the future i have no doubt but do you just get the sense things are starting to build i mean it's good that the prices are starting to build but you can just see there's so much stuff happening out there you know all these big companies suddenly getting into it and buying into you know mining uh you know, buying stocks in mining companies, you know, starting to buy stocks in Square Cash App and MicroStrategy. It is all slowly but surely starting to happen. And the one thing that I worry, not worry about, sorry, wonder about 
is, you know, will we see the true mainstream adoption or are we still a couple of sort of maybe runs away? I just, you know, I change my mind quite regularly on it. It feels like, you know, this has got to be it. You know, it's going to go mainstream uh, and, you know, there'll be no real need to kind of, you know, sell any and go back to the dollar. But then I think that's what everyone was thinking last time in 2017. Uh, but, you know, now that the big players are here and the big money is here, is it now ready to go mainstream you know, I'm not sure it is, uh, in all fairness. I don't think the technology is there yet. We still don't have ETH 2.0 rolled out yet, so we don't know that ETH can truly scale and handle everything. The side chains and layer twos look pretty good, but ETH 2.0 itself uh, is still not, uh, you know, fully out and running. We don't have uh, the Bitcoin Lightning web, uh, network being widely adopted, so we don't know if it can scale big enough to really hand handle, you know, the rest of the world's population so yeah i'm i'm caught in two minds about you know how much do i want to cash out from this stuff because i don't believe in the dollar long term although as i've said i think the cryptocurrency market will actually save the dollar particularly the us dollar as it's the you know the currency of the world at the moment i think it will be saved for a while but eventually it'll still get printed into oblivion and eventually people will completely move away from the dollar. But I just get the feeling like we're not quite ready for that mainstream adoption yet. I think we still may be sort of nearly 10 years away from it. So another cycle or two yet. Could be completely wrong. I really don't know. But I do think that I am still going to cash out uh, a reasonable portion, anywhere from a third to nearly half of my crypto portfolio you know, over the next sort of few months or so, whatever it may be. Uh, and again, it's more just about how I see the market going and, you know, getting the feel for it rather than any, you know, specific time or specific amount of money or anything like that. Because it's too hard to pick. Sometimes, you know, if I say, you know, I'm not cashing out any Bitcoin until it gets to 120,000, it may not get to 120,000, may only get to sort of 70,000 for all we know. No one truly knows yet. So it really will be more about, yeah, just kind of reading the markets and seeing how things are is really going to let me know when I feel like taking some profits out is going to be the correct time. So no specific date and no specific price range, although there are, you know, I do put a bit of that into that. Like I do think Bitcoin's going to go to 100,000. I think it's going to go over 100,000. I just don't know exactly when that's going to be. So yeah, I am at a bit of a, a conundrum as they would say right there. You know, how much do I want to cash out? Because if I get into the dollar and crypto just keeps running, well, then, you know, I've lost some, you know, unrealized gains. But when I think about that, I, you know, I always got to remind myself, no one ever lost money taking profits. So could I have got more? Yes. And then again, I need to remind myself that I'm never going to pick the exact top and I'm never going to pick the exact bottom. I don't need to pick the exact top and the exact bottom. I've just got to be thereabouts. And, you know, again, I don't think the dollar's dead yet. I think it still probably has, you know, another 10, maybe even 20 years before I think the dollar uh, is truly, it'll just disappear. People won't be able to use something that can constantly be, you know, inflated when governments need it and things like that. And then I think crypto really does take over. But yeah, I don't think we're there yet. All right, the last story, and this one, you know, really is disappointing. So Alex Saunders of Nuggets News, he's being sued for 350000 by one of his followers. Now, it's sad in all sorts of terms. I really liked Alex Saunders uh, and Nuggets News. He had so many good tips, and it's just a shame to see that it's gone the way that we think it has. Like, no one true, well, at least, you know, the general public don't truly know what's happened yet. We're going to have to wait and see, you know, as, a, as that saying goes. It's all going to come out in the wash, I guess. But it does sound like he squandered a lot of money uh, and got loans off people and blew it all on FTX trying to leverage trade. I hope that's not the case for, you know, both him, you know, he's he's married with a child and things like that. And also for the people that, you know, lent him money and invested in his project. It's going to be really a shame if this is what has actually occurred. So we go down here and it says the plaintiff, which is a New Zealand-based person, Ziv... Himmelfarb, 
hopefully I've said that right and I apologise if I haven't, filed a formal written order on August the 11th in the Victorian Supreme Court demanding that Saunders repays $479,270 Australian dollars uh, in losses and damages for unpaid loans and investments that are yet to materialise. So Himmelf Himmelfarb claimed to have first invested four Bitcoin on February 17 with Saunders after the influencer offered him exposure to a crypto fund via Facebook Messenger. The Bitcoin invested was worth 198000 so that's a bit of money, 200000 and imagine what that would be worth now. That was back in February, two, uh, February uh, I don't know if that's 2017 or the 17th of February. E either way, like... It doesn't matter when that was, that would be worth a whole lot more right now. Now, Himmelfarb said Saunders then asked him to invest $50,000 worth of stable coins uh, into his forthcoming stable coin project, uh, and I think it was Decentrabank, uh, if I remember correctly. Now, the plaintiff accused Saunders of failing to possess the licensing needed to offer investment products to the public. In May, Himmelfarb uh, agreed that he also loaned 30 Ether to Saunders after the YouTuber reached out to him uh, to help with liquidity issues. So this one individual has, you know, he's or he, she uh, has really been stung by by this. And again, I, I really did like Alex. I was a massive fan, watched his channel, you know, followed a number of his picks and things like that and, and did quite well. I wasn't part of his paid group. Uh, I just couldn't afford it. I thought it was quite expensive. Uh, one of the more expensive ones out there. But a number of his you know, followers, again, did quite well. And even he said, Himmel, uh, Himmel Farb said that uh, he did quite well from following Alex Saunders. But in the end, uh, it, it, it cost this person. Again, I don't know if this is a him or a her. Ziv sounds like a him, but may not be. So this is really, really disappointing that, you know, one of the the bigger people in the space has possibly turned out to be yeah one of the worst piece one of the worst people to sort of follow uh and yeah that's a real shame uh, right across the board again for you know the people who invested and have possibly lost all their money uh for all his followers who really yeah liked his channel and got some really good picks I don't know if he would ever be able to come back to the space if it's found to be true. Even if he did have great picks, I just don't think people would ever sort of trust him again. But, you know, never say never. We'll have to wait and see. But again, he, you know, he has a, I think he's got a young son. And I think he was sort of newly married not that long ago. So, yeah, it's a shame all around. And, yeah, very, very disappointing. Uh, yeah. I'm sort of lost for words, really. He really was one of the number one people that I followed uh, on YouTube and social media when it came to cryptocurrencies. And, yeah, for it to turn out like this, yeah, a shame all around. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Bit of a kind of pullback. And, again, maybe Bitcoin's going to go down to around about that $43,000 mark. That's where I'd expect it to sort of retreat to if it's going to continue to retreat. Otherwise, again, we could be up and off to the races. We'll just have to wait and see. But that's it from me.